Hi everyone! Happy Sunday! It's Heidi Scott with DIY Dreaming. Hope that you are having a wonderful afternoon or whatever day or time of the week it is if you're watching this on a replay. On this video tutorial, it's going to be another uh, episode of Christ and Crafting and we will be talking about this verse from Ephesians 3.20 that says God is able to do far more than we could ever ask for or imagine. And we'll also be doing a couple of really fun crafts that are super easy. So I, um, I'm excited about today and I hope you are too. Um, as we're getting started, feel free to ask questions. Um, I'm gonna drop a pin here real quick with the link. Everything I will be using today um, will be from Home Depot and, Hang on just a second. And um, from Magnolia Design Company. Okay, so I just pinned the link in case you want to look at any of these stencils or anything else. Alrighty, so um, this is the stencil that we'll be working with. And I have two projects that are completed. The first one, I'm just going to tell you what I did. The second one, I'm going to actually show you this really cool technique where you can use chalk paste, almost like a paint or a stain, and then you can stencil over the top of it. And then the last project, we're gonna do all of it from start to finish. Okay, so the first project I wanna show you is this one. And you know what, I have a, a let me just grab this. I should have grabbed it before. Where is it? Oh, here it is. What this looked like when I picked it up at my local Goodwill. It's really not terrible. It's just not really my style. It, they were $1.91 a piece. They came from Goodwill. And so what I did with this one is I just painted two coats of a gray colored chalk paint on it. Then I um, distressed it with some uh, sanding sponge. Then I put a little bit of wax on it because sometimes when you're working with painted wood and these green stencils from Magnolia Design Company, um, they are a little extra sticky. And if you put wax, it helps with the whole process. So then I just used this stencil and I used some of this almond latte, which is this creamy color of chalk paste on it. And it's beautiful. I'm not sure what I'm going to do with it. I think I'm just going to put it in a, in a book stand, probably in the kitchen or possibly in the powder room this fall. So that was the first project. Okay, the next thing I want to show you is um, it involves, I haven't said hello to anyone. Hey, everyone. Thank you. You know, okay, so somebody is, Mary is asking me about wax. You can just, just use whatever kind of wax you can get at the hardware store, like Min Wax. Um, it doesn't have to be fancy at all. Okay, so um, the next project involves paint stir sticks. And I don't know if you guys have ever worked with these before, but they are so fun and they are so super affordable. Um, one pack, these came from Home Depot and one package of 10 sticks is $1. So what we're going to do is I'm going to show you how we can almost paint on these with chalk paste. Then we're going to do a dry brush of white chalk paste over the top. And then I'm going to show you how I stencil. But before I do that, let me give you a little sneak peek of what the project looks like. So, um, so you'll be motivated to stay. And then the last project is going to involve a piece of tin. Okay, so this is my project. What do you guys think? I'm excited, it turned out super cute. Um, I used bright colors just for fun and then dark gray chalk paste to do um, the stencil. And this is what the back of it looks like, but I'll tell you all about that in just a minute. Okay. So to get started on that project, what I did, and please forgive me, but I'm planning to just ramble because I have so much to tell you about these projects. Okay, uh, let's see, I wanna make it so you can see a little better. Okay, 
So all I did to get started, oops, so sorry. My um, tripod is sinking. <laughs> my word, it's completely sunk. Okay, let's try again. I need to just not touch it. Don't touch it, Heidi. Okay. You guys are so forgiving of me. I appreciate it. Okay, so I'm just going to do two of these right here. Just real quick to show you what you do. And um, we're using the chalk paste from Magnolia Design Company. We'll use these two colors. This blue is called Cool Water. And the gray is called Cool Gray. All right. Also on that other project though, I used this color, which is called Blue Ice. And I used this pretty lavender just for fun. And then I used a green that I diluted with white, okay? But we'll just do it with these two. All right, so what you're gonna do to get started, and you guys, you can take this idea and you can literally make anything you want, seriously. Okay, so this is what they look like. And I'm just gonna take a cruddy brush, a paper towel, and have some water here. Um, I'm gonna spray a little bit of water into my blue because it's looking a little bit thick. Okay, and I'm just going to, I wanna move this down, but I'm afraid my tripod's gonna, okay, that's a little bit better. You guys can see what I'm doing. Okay, so I'm just gonna dip my brush into this blue chalk paste, which is not how you normally handle chalk paste. And I'm brushing it on my paint stir stick. And it's almost like it stains it. I'll show you what I mean in just a second. I, um, I tried this two different ways before I came live. The first way I tried was really diluting it. And it honestly didn't look as good when I did the white dry brush over the top. So that's why I'm using it full strength. And I'll lift this up and show you. I'm just covering the edges of it too. Because those may sort of be visible. Okay. And these dry really quick. So that is basically what it looks like. The back, can, you can do the back if you want, but you don't need to. My backs of everything I do are always super messy. Okay, and now I'm gonna take the other color, which is this pretty gray. I love this combination of blue and gray. My sign here reminds me of like a piece of beach art. Okay, and I'm gonna use a different cruddy brush. I mean, these are cruddy. <laughs> And I'm just gonna take a little bit of gray. The magic is in the next step, so stay with me. And we're gonna do the same thing. We're just putting it. If you're, uh, if it seems like it's just way too thick, you can do a little spritz of um, distilled water. I'm just putting this gray on here. Not neat, it, I mean, it really does not need to be neat at all because we're gonna put the white stuff over the top and it's supposed to look messy. So don't make the first layer neat. Uh, yeah. So I hope everyone is doing good today. I'm excited about the verse, this um, Ephesians 3.20. Actually, we're gonna probably read a little bit more of Ephesians 3. And I'm gonna read it all in my Bible translation, which is NIV, and then I'm also gonna read it um, in the message translation, which I don't know if you guys are familiar with that, but um, sometimes when I'm having a hard time figuring out what a Bible verse is saying or how it applies, um, and this might be more so if you're using like a King James version uh, translation of the Bible. But even with NIV, which is New, Inter New International Version, or ESV, or any of those, sometimes it still can be a little hard to understand. And um, so I'll just go to Bible Gateway. I did get my message Bible out, though. I'm going to actually read from that today. But I'll go to Bible Gateway, which is a place you can go online. It's free. And I'll type in the, the verse address, 
and then I'll flip back and forth between the two translations and it's super helpful, really. Okay, the next step we're gonna do is we're gonna take some white chalk paste. This is what they may look like. This one's already starting to dry. Which it doesn't have to be fully dry before we move on to the next step. Okay, and the next step, I'm gonna take another cruddy brush. This is um, not a super tight brush. And some white chalk paste. You could do this same technique with paint, with craft paint. Um, or if you have chalk paste, you should try it with that, okay? Um, the trick is, after you get it applied, then you definitely want to do a coat of this um, clear protective finish. This is a matte finish, a sealer. I did it after I was done with the painting before I stenciled, and then I did it again after the stencil was dry. Hey, Marsha. Hi, Brenda. Hey, Misty. Is it Misty Jean or Misty? Crafts and Christ are your favorite. Oh, I look forward to it too. I did feel a little nervous today, which I haven't felt that too much lately. I don't know why. I can just, I can start to let the enemy get to me and tell me that, you know, I don't know what I'm talking about, whatever, but I'm just gonna proceed and, um, let the Holy Spirit lead me. Okay, so we're gonna do the blue one first. And again, the back is messy. And if you're just joining me, what we're making is this cute sign, which I'll show you in just a second, made out of paint stir sticks from Home Depot. And we're using chalk paste, almost as our paint for our base, just to give it some fun. Okay, so I have some white chalk paste on the end of my brush and I just tapped it off a little bit. And then I'm just gonna do this kind of thing here. Can you see what I'm doing? It mutes the um, brightness of this color and it makes it look like it's whitewashed almost, which it kind of is with white chalk. So you can fiddle around with this to make it however light you want it or streaky or whatever um, you like. Oh, you love my crafts, thank you. I'm always looking for something different because I know there's a lot of other crafters out there that you could be watching. And of course, I want you to be watching me, um, especially my friends, oh my goodness. And that so many of you guys are like, like friends, like we're crafting together. So I don't want you to get bored, so I'm always trying to come up with something different. And this kind of is. Okay, let's do the gray one, and then I'll um, show you the rest of the project and talk about it. Okay, so it's not completely dry, but it really doesn't matter. And you de definitely wanna protect your surface that you're working on with something. I'm working on top of a paper placemat right now. Okay, and when you get an area like this, where, oops, I went on really too thick, um, you can just take a paper towel and dab some of that off, and then go back over it again. And I think part of the charm of these is the mixture of colors and the mixture of the different um, heaviness of the whitewash in chalk paste over the top of it. Okay, so this is what these look like right now. They're not great right now, but let me get the, the finished one and we'll talk about all the steps. And then we'll move on to the, the next project. Move this out of the way. Okay, here it is. So I used multiple colors of chalk paste. Um, and you can use any color that you have. Um, really, it, it's just personal preference, but I wanted sort of blues and green and purple and gray. So I used two different colors of blue. If you only have one, you can use one. I used a purple, I used a gray, 
and then I also used um, a green, but I guess I put that away. And um, I painted the sticks, and then I did the whitewash around on each one individually, let it dry. Then I took this outside on one of those cake boards out and laid it in the grass, and I used my clear protective finish spray on it. Um, I put it on really good. Then I came back in the house and I took my stencil and I laid it over the top. Now I hadn't glued these pieces together yet because I wasn't sure if I was going to try to space them out. Um, I don't have an example in here. Or if I was going to do them close. You can, you can glue them together, fix them together first if you want. Anyways, so I just put the um, stencil on my piece and I used this dark gray chalk paste with one of these awesome little squeegee deals. Uh, applied the chalk paste, took off my stencil, threw it in a tub of water, and then when this was dry, I, I did another coat of the spray. It turned out cute, they're saying. I think it's really cute, actually. What is the sign behind you, please? Well, let's see, what do I have behind me? Um, right here is a um, tarnished silver platter or tray from Goodwill that I painted with a creamy colored chalk paste and then I stenciled another one of the Magnolia Design Company stencils that I love on it that says, I still remember the days I prayed for the things I have now. And it's using this same gray chalk paste. There's a link at the bottom. I pinned a link to Magnolia DIY if you want to look at those stencils. Let's see what else is there. Also behind me, um, right here, is that cute little piece of tin that we did. I think it was last week actually that we stenciled with another stencil from Magnolia Design Company two layers of it and it says fresh flowers farmers market is not cute and then I just did this little hanger on it and a bow these tins we're gonna use another one of these were something that I picked up at um, Queen of Hearts which is like this fun little antique mall close by where I live and um, they're vintage tin ceiling tiles. And look how bad the back of them is terrible. But I just cleaned the front up, sprayed it, and then I'm using it to uh, create a little piece of art. Okay, and then also behind me, stand up, is this was the sign that I did yesterday when I showed you guys how to layer chalk how to layer stencils. I, um, I did the polka dots first in the gray and then the family stencil in the black. And um, I think that's, I mean, there's other things here, but those are the main things I wanted to answer and show you. Okay, let's come back. So then after it was all dry, I sprayed it one more time. I love how it looks, don't you think? Now, in person, you can see the letters on in gray that are on this gray piece. But when you're looking at it on the camera, it looks like it's hard to see. But it really isn't in person. And then um, on the back, this was smaller than the signs that I usually make. So I really couldn't use one of, the, um, one of these stir sticks to hold it all together. So I just got out my craft sticks from Walmart and I glued three of these puppies on the back of my sign. I glued them so you can't see them though. I didn't glue them where the spaces are. And um, I did, last time I made one of these paint stir stick signs, I used hot glue and you guys, it came apart. So I did not use hot glue this time. Instead, this is what I pulled out. I don't know if I like it better than E6000. Probably not, but this is what I had handy. Liquid Nails Small Projects. And I just put it on the back of three of these stir sticks, stuck them on there, and then that was it. I'll probably, I'm thinking about just taking some of this off-white twine and tying it between the holes on either side. And you guys, I, I did alternate. Where are my stir sticks? I'll show you what I'm talking about. I did alternate back and forth. Okay, so these, what is that? 
these um, stir sticks have like a dip in the handle. All right. So I, um, when I was making my sign, I put that dip on one side and then the straight piece there and then the dip on the other side and I just went back and forth, if that, if that makes sense at all. Yeah. So when I'm all finished, I will take pictures of this cute little sign. I'm not sure what I'm gonna do with it. It actually goes great here in my little craft room slash my husband's office. So I'll probably um, figure out how to hang it up and put it in here somewhere. I don't know. Okay, let me clean off my hands and then I want to show you something interesting and then we'll do our next craft. And we'll hurry and then we'll talk about the Ephesians 3.20. Get rid of some of this stuff. So I have some room. Well, we might need this. Let's keep that. Okay, so I don't know if you guys remember this t-shirt that I made for 4th of July. It was so cute. I wore it with my cute little red, white, and blue um, shorts from the loft that kind of feel like 4th of July. And I made this using a Magnolia Design Company stencil that says Faith, Family, Freedom. And I used blue, red, and silver ink. Not chalk paste, it's ink, okay? Then I heat, when it was dry, I heat set it with an iron for a few minutes, just going over and over and over it. And it just came out of the washing machine this afternoon. And look how good it looks. I mean, my husband, he, I think he didn't know what was in that load, but he even put it in a hot dryer and it's just fine. So if you've been toying with the idea of trying the ink from Magnolia Design Company, you should try it. They just brought like, I don't know, there's 10 or 12 colors that are in stock and available right now of ink, not chalk paste. Um, and there's some really fun colors in there too. Of course, I love the more, I love like the, the blue and the red and more, um, more serious colors, but they have lots of fun colors too. So I just wanted to show you, I was so excited how that held up. Um, okay. Let's do our next project. Was I going to do something else? I'm trying to think. I don't know. Okay, so this is another piece of that rusty tin, vintage tin ceiling roof that I picked up at my antique mall. It was um, $5 a piece. And they're really in good shape on the front. I did clean it. Um, and you guys, I was in a hurry, so I literally just used one of these Clorox antibacterial wipes, a paper towel, and then I took it outside, laid it in the grass, and I sprayed it with this stuff, okay? And um, I wanted to show you this. This I purchased at the same time as I purchased the antique, um, the vintage ceiling tins. It has that Mandela lace stencil on it right now. Um, I haven't figured out yet what I'm going to do next. It is, it will hold magnets, so I don't know. I might do something with that. But um, anyways, this is the Mandela Lace Stencil and White Chalk Paste from Magnolia Design Company. Okay, so what I was thinking that we would do with this, it's got two little holes on it where it must have been nailed into the roof underneath the next piece of tin that would go on. You see those? And I'm going to do put that as the top so I can run something through it um, so that I can run a piece of ribbon or something interesting through it. And, oops, I forgot my, I forgot my fuzzing cloth. Um, so it's clean and sprayed and ready to go. And um, I am just going to fuzz the stencil once. I've used it a few times already. It's still really nice and sticky. I think I've used it four times now. Um, but I still want to do one fuzz, which um, is just to make it so it won't be impossible to remove from the surface. And this green thing I'm using right here, it's called a fuzzing cloth. It's like seven dollars. It's something they offer also at Magnolia Design Company. And you can fuzz on this side and then you can wipe or pat your stencils dry on this back gray side. Okay, so just did that. We'll lay this on top of here. 
then it won't be so noisy. Okay, and I'm just going to figure out where I want to place my stencil. I want it pretty much centered and basically straight, but it doesn't have to be perfect. Okay, so these stencils are mesh. They're adhesive. They're awesome. Um, they are super sticky though. And so when you first get them, you really want to fuzz them good. If you don't have that fuzz cloth, you can use any kind of a low lint type thing, like your jeans, a t-shirt, um, one of those flower sack tea towels. Don't use a terry cloth towel or anything that has a ton of lint in it. Okay, so this is stuck on here. And I'm gonna just do your basic creamy, I'm loving this color, this almond latte. I'm gonna use this again. This is the same color I used on that wood tray. And it's brand new, so I haven't even taken the time to open the whole thing up. But I have used it a couple times. Um, so let me pull this off. And then I'm just going to use one of the squeegees and take some blobs of it. And um, you guys often, people say, oh, I'm so intimidated by stencils. I don't know if I could do it. You make it look so easy. It seriously is easy. You just gotta make sure that it's on good, that you've either sprayed or waxed. If you're working on something like tin or glass or painted wood or, or regular wood, um, and that you clean them promptly and that you don't keep going over and over and over the same area because when you do that, it has a tendency to go under the stencil. Anyways, so I'm just pushing it through the holes here and then I'm taking the excess off. And I'm just gonna kind of follow along with the design here which what I love about this stencil is that it's a mix of two different fonts. It's not super fussy. I'm more of a plain Jane kind of person. Um, so it's not super fussy and I don't know. I just, I think it's awesome. I, the projects that I do here at DIY Dreaming, if you're new, they're, um, they're all projects that don't require any artistic ability. They're projects usually that are pretty darn affordable because I, that's, I'm just frugal that way. Um, they're things that are sometimes a little unusual like stenciling on paint stir sticks that you've painted with um, chalk paste. I like to do those kind of things. And um, they're quick. Like I've tried painting furniture and I just don't have a long enough attention span for that. Um, and I mean, anyone can do them. So, those, oh, and they're usually focused on either faith or family. So if you're new here, if you haven't been, um, haven't seen a DIY dreaming or a Christ and crafting before, put that in the comments so I can see your name and know who's watching and um, that's how we get to know each other is, you know, virtually. I see the same names over and over, and then pretty soon I start to feel like I know you guys, and I'm sure you guys feel the same way. Okay, I'm just taking the excess off. If I've made any huge goofs with this, I'll be able to fix it. I'll just wait till it's dry, and then use a toothpick or a Q-tip or something to... Then you just put your excess back in your little thing. Oh, and I usually give my chalk paste one or two squeezes or pumps right on top of distilled water before I put the cap back on, and that keeps them nice and, and moist. Because these are made, chalk paste is made out of calcium carbonate, and it wants to be hard. That's its natural state. So, okay, let's pull this off. I hope I did a good job. Looks good so far. I was worried down here at the bottom, but it looks good. There's a few little areas that I might use a Q-tip or a toothpick to 
sort of um, pull off some chalk. I just threw it in a little bath of water, and this is what we have. And that could not be easier. So maybe I'll use this creamy colored um, twine, and uh, I might possibly do either a creamy colored pulled string burlap flower or something right here in this corner. But I'll do that, oops, I'll do that off camera and I'll take pictures and share, share that with you. So I hope you liked these three little projects. Um, this one. And then this one. If you're just getting on now, uh, when I'm finished here, you can watch the whole video if you'd like on replay. And then we did this one, which I will finish off camera. Love that stencil. I'm thinking that I definitely want to make a t-shirt um, using that same stencil. Okay. Let's see. All right. So today, for the um, Christ part of this, um, I just want to talk a little bit about um, my thoughts on that verse from Ephesians 3.20 to 21. And um, I want to read a couple of different translations of it to you and then point out a few things that I think are really awesome and that we can sometimes forget. And I guess the overall theme here is that, you know, maybe it's just me. I can tend to take God down to my size, to human size. And forget <laughs> that he you know spoke the world into existence he created the heavenly bodies he created our intricate bodies um, <laughs> so but I can I can sort of uh, take him down to my level sometimes and um, yeah Church today, we, we are doing church online because we're, it's July and we're still in the middle of the COVID thing, in case you're watching this a year from now. Um, and there were, there were some good songs that made me really think about this idea that, uh, there's this one song where it says, I forgot um, how big you are. And that's easy to forget. If I could remember that, then I would never fall asleep while I was praying to him. But I do that sometimes. I don't know. Maybe you never do, but I do. Okay, so um, I would usually look at the message translation on Bible Gateway, but I actually got my message Bible out. And um, let me just read this to you. And the, the, um, It was written by the Apostle Paul also known as Saul of Tarsus, before he was blinded and became a disciple, became a, a believer in Christ. And, um, and it, he wrote it to the Ephesians to strengthen them. And um, he had gone all around this area planting all these churches and telling them the, the good news, the gospel. And then, um, you know, infiltrators crept in and they started combining pagan religions with Christianity and doing all kinds of getting off track, basically. So he wrote this whole letter to the Ephesians about that. But this section is, um, I'm going to start, I'm going to start at uh, Ephesians 3.14. And in this translation, it's labeled, um, a prayer for the Ephesians, but in my translation version, it's labeled the secret plan of God. Okay, so um, Paul talks a lot about the, the mystery of Christ before this and um, how he didn't deserve it. He didn't, it was made known to him by the Holy Spirit and I, I encourage you to go back and read that beginning part. Okay, in verse 14, he says, For this reason I kneel before the Father, from whom his whole family in heaven and on earth 
derives its name. I pray that out of his glorious riches, he may strengthen you with the power through his spirit in your inner being. He wants them to be strengthened with the Holy Spirit in their inner being. So that Christ may dwell in your hearts through faith. That's awesome. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, and that was the greatest command, to love the Lord and love one another. And that is how people can see that we are Christ's disciples, by how we love one another. Those are just a few random verses on love. Um, okay, and I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power together with the saints to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ. And to know that this, um, and to know that this love surpasses knowledge so that you can be filled to the measure, which means completely, of all the fullness of God. Okay, and then he concludes this paragraph by saying um, the verse that we did in the stencil. He says, now to him, meaning to Christ, who is able to do immeasurably more than all we ask or could imagine, according to his power that is at work within us, to him, to Jesus, to God, be glory in the church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever. Amen. So um, so what I'm reminded of is that, um, that Christ is able to do so much more than we could ever think to ask for, that we could ever think was possible. I love this um, combination of words immeasurably more than all we could ask or imagine. Um, and that power that Christ possesses, he puts that inside of us through the Holy Spirit to help us get through things. So we can access that, um, that power. And that, that is um, kind of hard to still understand. So let me read it to you in the message. Sometimes the things that they have in the message are almost kind of funny. And, um, yeah. Okay, so it says, My response is to get down on my knees before the Father. This magnificent Father who parcels out all heaven and earth. I ask him to strengthen you. He's asking uh, the Father to strengthen the Ephesians. By his Spirit, not a brute strength but a glorious inner strength that Christ will live in you as you open the door and invite him in. So he's saying that um, he's asking the father to strengthen them, um, not by pushing them around, but by um, an inner strength. And um, okay, it says, and I ask him that with both feet planted firmly on love, that you'll be able to take in with all the followers of Jesus, listen to these words, the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Wow. If, you know, if we could, if we could really grasp how much he loves us, which is hard to think in, you know, a world of bazillions of people with everybody having complicated issues in their lives, that he loves he loves us with an extravagant kind of love, then it would change everything. And I can sometimes get that, but then as soon as I start to really get it, then, I don't know, things get busy. And I forget. <sighs> okay, so he's talking about the extravagant dimensions of Christ's love. Reach out and experience the breadth Test its length, plumb the depths, rise to the heights, live full lives, full in the fullness of God. And then here's that verse from the stencil in the message translation. It says, God can do anything, you know, far more than you could ever imagine or guess or request in your wildest dreams. I love that. 
He does that not by pushing us around, but by working within us, his Holy Spirit deeply and gently inside of us. So, um, I guess um, when I look at my stencil, the projects that I made, I'm going to try to remember this section of Ephesians and that when I'm tempted to think that God can't take care of this or can't do this or that or that he needs my help, <laughs> um, I'm going to remember that God can do immeasurably more than we could ever imagine, guess, or request in our wildest dreams. And he does that by working within us. So I don't know if there's somebody watching this Christ and Crafting that needs to hear that. Uh, maybe you are feeling alone because we're, we're, I don't know what we're in right now. If we're supposed to be in or out or, um, anyways. And maybe you can feel hopeless like, golly, is this coronavirus ever going to go away? Are things ever going to get back to normal? Um, and you, you might be thinking God can't, God can't take care of that, but he can. I just want to assure you that he is still in heaven. He's still in charge. He's reigning and ruling. Um, he's in control and he loves you. He loves me. He loves all of us. And um, so just remember that and, you know, take heart to know that he can do so much more if it is his will. And that's really all I have to say. I don't know if that was just a whole bunch of gobbledygook, me reading some Bible verses that was didn't make any sense, but that's what the Holy Spirit laid on my heart to talk about. And I, I'm gonna remember this. Okay, so on this stencil, it says far more. I really wish it said immeasurably more. But I'll be remembering that when I think about this stencil. That he can do immeasurably more than we could ever hope or imagine. And that he's doing it within us. Alrighty. Um, I will be live tomorrow with another craft project. I'm not sure what I'm going to be doing. Um... I do have something kind of fun coming up. Do you want a little sneak peek? So I'm waiting on this stencil set from Magnolia Design Company that looks like big Scrabble tiles. It has the whole alphabet, it's awesome. And uh, maybe you've seen where people will put on their walls all the names of their family members, like Scrabble, all connected. Well, I just ordered, I think there's 80 pieces in here off of Amazon, these little uh, pressed wood, what does it say they are? I don't know, pieces of wood. And I'm gonna experiment with um, staining and painting and stenciling them and, you know, all the different things that you could write or say or do with these. So I don't know if I'll get to that on Monday, but I'll definitely be doing that this week. And we'll be doing more. Um, we might do that macrame keychain this week. I don't know. I have tons of good stuff coming up. If you haven't already liked and followed DIY Dreaming and turned on your notifications, you might want to do that. And if you haven't been over to that group that we have called Dreamy DIY, it's a Facebook group that I set up a year ago, um, you should hop over there, ask to join. It's Dreamy, and then there's a space, DIY. Um, and I'll say yes, and then look through the photos because there's like, I don't know, seven or 8,000 super creative people over there sharing all their projects. And I'm getting so many awesome ideas. Um, and I know you will too. So anyways, have a blessed rest of your day and I'll see you tomorrow. Thanks for watching. Bye.